This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Good. How are you doing, Mr. Jason Glick? Oh, I'm doing doing just fine, John. It's like it's it's a great great week, and it's like on, and as I warned everyone uh, um, about at the end of the podcast last week, this, this one's going to be a total love fest. Alrighty. Oh, well, outside of the scorching heat that we've been experiencing here in Southern California, um, I assume that that hasn't really like detracted from your reading habits or anything. How are you doing with your uh, your haul from Comic Con? Like I just, it's, it's like it, it's been it's still been pretty pretty busy. Yeah. Oh no. Wait, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, sorry. I just Scott just threw up a message at me. Uh, no problem, sir. We're cool. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like, oh my god, the call just ended. No, <laughs> wait, no it didn't. Not quite. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's like. But now so the call is like going this, to end. No, I'm just yes. <laughs> any second. Any second now. That's how. That's how, that's how this connection works. <laughs> Sometimes. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so you no. Know, it's like some things. I mean, like it's continuing just like as a pace as you can as everyone can tell from what I was from all the posting I've done over the last over the last week. And also it's like I've had plenty of time to go and reread the topic for this week, which is um Kyo, um Shimoku Kyo's um Genshiken. Now, short version is, is that you know, it's like if you've ever wanted to wonder about, you know, what my experience um as in, as part of like, like the uh, anime club at the University of California Riverside was um back in say like, the uh, late in the very late 90s and early, early aughts, then, you know, this is going, this is your explanation. For everyone else, this is basically, Genshin is probably the most um, in-depth um, like, uh, you, uh, um, an examination you'll find of, of otaku culture in, it's like, in manga today. It's like, well, it's like, well, otaku um, is basically kind of, it tends to be banded about in, in sometimes of a, a derivative fashion. In a derivative fashion, in the sense that you've got, uh, it's basically like meant to describe, you know, fans with no life. Fans, like these are the guys who, you know, who um, watch, who are basically um, driving the anime industry to ruin, who only watch, like, the porno stuff on TV, who just, like, follow K on obsessively, and, like, just, like, follow, and just, like, just, like, eating up all, like, the, uh, the specific, all, like, the, um, the fan specific merchandise, like, the, the like, the, uh, like, the, um, the full size body pillows, and, it's like and uh, mouse pads with um with that are made out of, that made to feature girls' breasts as the arresting pads stuff like that. But now, and I'm not saying that the guys in Genshin aren't like that. In fact, they're probably just looking at um some of the stuff that's going today and like, hey, it's like like they like the, like the rest of the world has finally caught up to us. But um, but the beauty of Genshin is that it actually still goes goes a long way to showing its characters as you know as average. And it's like just you know it was. It's like as as real people, and like not I wouldn't say exactly the average fanboys, but they're still. But you get a good example of like you know, they still come up as real people in spite of their particular obsessions. Uh huh. Yeah. Now with uh, now the story starts basically as like it, with our characters with um the introduction of our point of view character um Sasahara. He's just joined um just just entered college, and um there are two clubs on campus. One is like the uh, the manga club, which is like the big. Um, it's like the big, like more popular um, anime, anime manga, manga style club, and then there's the Society for the Study of Visual Culture, named so, and I assume mainly because just to get around the fact that you know, you know, we're not just to give it, give the sense that you know, hey, we're not just you know about it's not just anime and, and manga club. We're just like you know, we're talking about visual culture, you know. But um, but the Genshiken is the uh, is the odd club of the two, and that's and that's the kind of club that I that I helped ran, run for. Um, for several, for a couple of years, for for several years at UCR, and um, it's like, and you've got, and it's like, and this is the cult, this is the, the smaller culty club that I get attracts weirdos. I mean, you've got you got Madara, Madarame, who is like the uh, Uber otaku, who just like who the guy who guy who buys lots of dojin, she doesn't own a single piece of um of porn involving um real real people. You've got yeah, you've got Tanaka, the uh, the cosplay fanatic, um, Kugiyama, the uh, like the, it's like the big, it's like the big, big quiet guy who doesn't really do, doesn't really do much of anything. Um, you got the president who has just been there for years and years and years, and no one's exactly sure like how long he's been there. And also, um, like other, the other new, um, um, other new member from this from this um, cl- 
for this year, um, like Kosaka, who's um, about as anti otaku as you can get. In the sense that he's he's good looking, got blonde, he's got um, dyed blonde hair. Um, he's, he's even got a girlfriend as well, and um, his girlfriend um, Kabe. Um, she she can't stand otaku. She is just ultra trendy. She's like the ultra trendy. I'm um, like I'm like I'm shop I'm shopping like up on shopping um, like stylist type, and like she and like she can't. She's just wondering, you know, why the hell is my is, is the man I, is the man I like in it's like involved with all the, with all these weirdos? <laughs> so so basically, if, if Sasahara is kind of like the uh, is our point of view character. Um, Kasukabe is kind of like the, like, you know, the everyone, like the point of view for everyone, everyone else. And, and we get, and we get the picture of like, of, of all their particular obsessions. We get, we get stuff, sort of picture on, co- on cosplay, on model building. It's like on, and of course, lots and lots of stuff on Dojinshi and, um, and H games. It's like, it, like we get to see them go to, um, you go, go see tackle Akiba. You go to see them go attend their version of of, of Comic Cat or uh, the Comic Fest. And there's also and it's like, but um, through it all, it's like we get a lot. Like uh, most of these characters are pretty well are are generally really well fleshed out over like over the course of the volume. Um, even though Sasahara is is set up as our point of view character, he's still um, it's like he, like he's eventually he eventually becomes president, and he's eventually like the, becomes the uh, driving force to being the. Um, like these Genjis into applying to um, putting out its first ever um, doujinshi for the for the event and all the uh, trauma and heartache that follows. Um, then there's um, Madarame who starts off as like he like as the like the kind of like the the, um, the portrait of otaku obsession like you know the kind of guy who you know, he's the kind of, he would, you would think he's the kind of guy who gives like otaku dumb a bad name but he, but as the, uh, the series goes on he winds up becoming probably its most developed and um, sympathetic me- member almost tragic. Remember, as a matter of fact, because because he winds up developing this crush on Kasakabe that is that is slow, slowly, meticulously realized that you know it's like you realize that, that you know he that this is that he he really does love her, but he's it's not ever going to be not just because she's already dating a guy she really likes, but also just because like you know his personality just can't get him to uh, just just can't get him to actually. Uh, you know, like trying to pursue it, or just like you know, like try to actually like you know, go after any girl in the first place. That's that becomes less true in the new series, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, now with um, and then you've got then there's Kasakabe, who I mean, she, I mean, like yeah, I mean, like she, I mean, like she, her her character could have been like cruel, like just a cruel joke. You know, like the person who hates Otaku and is just kind of like you know, at like. Like against them at every every turn, but but Shimoku also managed to find a way to humanize her her as well. But she doesn't exactly come around to their way of thinking. She doesn't become an otaku herself, but she does um, mellow out to a surprising degree as she gets as she becomes like you know like um, more involved with these people just by association and after a uh, and after a uh, um, fire event and if she she starts a fire um, accidentally um, after cleaning out the uh, you know, the, the, the Genshikens, uh, um homeroom. Now, oh, and she also she also winds up on being um, like forced into cosplay at two different points in the series, which is which is which is pretty hilarious for the most part. Especially once, especially during the first time, she winds up proving um, especially adept at um, capturing the essence of her character without even realizing it. Exactly, she has uh, um, her reasons for being there were initially very selfish. Oh yes. Um, and then warms up just a little bit. You see cracks on the exterior. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, it's like yeah. So like that's and that's the uh, yeah, so that's that's the best thing about about the series that they that all the characters um do do express a certain amount of development and growth over the course of the series. And this goes also goes for the new characters as well that that pop up. There's some um, Ono, the cos the other, the female cosplaying fanatic who could be could be seen as a uh, you know a like a horrible, like um, you know, like um, bo- th- she's like like fetches the big breasted um fan girl who likes bald, bald and bald and bearded men in her mm-hmm. in her. She, I mean, that could have been a horrible like um like bone to fan base. but you know it's like like she's still portrayed like as someone who has like, a real love for the for what she does, and there's also the fact that you know I, that um hey I actually did attend um. Uh, that in the club we actually did have a girl who was um fairly well endowed who actually did like um caught. Co- like cosplaying to 
like to a to a degree as well. <laughs> then you've also got um, Kai Kuchiki who, who joins the series series about midway. He becomes a regular character midway through, and he's he's kind of like he's like that, that 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 annoying guy that you couldn't stand in club. The one who just like has no <laughs> self restraint, who, like, who had no problem with reading porn out in out in front of everyone. Like no no shame in what in anything that he does. We had a guy and, like that in our Japanese class, actually. <laughs> and that, this guy he's everywhere. Uh-huh. And even and but even as the thing goes on, he eventually even I wouldn't say he doesn't mellow out at all, but you know it's like you kind of get used to him. You kind of like except like you know this guy has his has his place, and that people all and the characters all find find ways to deal with him deal with him as well. It's like he, I, be, like he I, I believe that the club initially rejected him, and then he pops up again. Is that not correct? Yeah, I think like event like he tried joining the um the other club on campus. They couldn't. They they couldn't stand him, but bizarrely, it's like once he shows up again, he um, it's like he he tries like saying, "Oh, I've been training so I can fight find beat Kosaka in um, fighting games." That turns out to be a huge lie because as soon as um uh, as um Kasukabe shows up, she says, "Oh, it's um Ku- oh it's Kuchi," and she's like, and "He's like, oh, that's what I've been for someone to call me by my chosen nickname," <laughs> and that and that's what gets him to stick around the club for like for the uh, like. For the, for the duration, but the um, the most substantial um, of the new additions is um, is Ogie. The uh, she's a uh, she's she's introduced to us as someone who, as a, as someone who started to join the, who initially joined the manga club, but then jumped out of the uh, of the club's second story window um, after getting into a disagree into a violent disagreement with the um, other female otaku in that club. And so they foisted, foisted her off into the Genshin, and she introduces herself as um, Chika Ogue, and she hates otaku because she is because she is like the, the like the most um, ravenous kind of um, Fujoshi or fangirl. That's the kind of girl who likes um, yaoi or gay porn. But she is so deeply in the closet about hiding her like her particular desires that that puts her at odds with you know with, with the entire with the rest of the club and it's like and herself, and but as we go on, we find we get we um we get more, we finally find out you know just why she's so bent out of shape about this, and it's like and she slowly starts and she slowly starts to mellow out as one. That and it's also through her that like the uh, whole message of this this series, like you know, basically this Genshin is a series about just you know coming like accepting like you know what you, like what you love for like for for what it is coming to terms like you know what what do you like and being able to like you know not hide from this kind of. From it, but just you know, fully embrace it. Because I mean, Sasahara, when he's introduced, he's just kind of like you know, I've always been interested in this kind of like this weird pervy stuff. I've never been had to embrace it. But um, but he eventually like you know becomes president, puts out a doujinshi, and becomes also becomes winds up getting a job as an editor, as manga editor um at this at this agency. Um, Kosaka like eventually winds up um like um I'm becoming a programmer at an at an H at an H game company. Um. It's like uh, on Casa Kaibe, you know, she winds up like, pursuing her dreams as like, as a fashion, as we say, a fashionista, opening her own um, clo- clothing store. I mean, o- an Ogie, she, like she like, like she's had a passion for creating manga and um, and doujinshi as well, and she winds up full- being able to like um, turn that into a full full time pers- pursuit as it goes on. So, so it's so I many like that's so it's got so it's got a real. Real great positive message, and you know, I guess like the um the one thing that that like, counts against is that you know just like that that you know, but it shows that they, you know, the one person who isn't able to come to terms with um you know with his with his desires, Madarame, is kind of like the one the one who doesn't really uh, doesn't have the like the whole, the unequivocally um positive happy happy ending. But still, Genshin volumes um one through nine or um Omnibio, um one through three are like are some of the best and most entertaining um like um works of fiction you'll be able to find about. It's like about otaku culture. It's like it's like it doesn't hide from all the worst, from all the from all the worst excesses of fandom, but but it doesn't really it doesn't actually rub your nose into into it. In a, it's like to a to a off off putting extent. Um, well, if you want that, you'll you can probably turn into the um, second season of the uh, of the anime, which you know, it's like I really like. It's really that the anime that got um, myself and John into the series because we saw the first saw the first um, season of the, manga, of the anime. Great stuff. Had some lots of classic moments, and um, it's like, and it was, and it's like, it's, it's that's highly recommended throughout the. It's like, like to anyone, 
to, 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 any, to anyone who hasn't seen it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like my and I, Delray and my um, eternal gratitude for bringing this over, bringing the series over to English once, it's like once I had seen it. The second season isn't quite as good, I and mean, it's got it still it still adapts manga, falls manga fairly closely, but there's still a bit more indulgence in terms of the fans fan service because now the series is established. It's like you get, they they got a better idea of what, what will play better to its like to its audience. They kind of like um. Went into that that a bit more. It also um, it also ends at a fairly awkward point without resolving. Um, it's one of its major plot plot threads, basically involving um, Ogier's history. So, so you know, first season great, second season well, it's like if you're a completist, I might as well pick it up. Now, yeah. yes, go on. No, 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 no. I agree with you completely. <laughs> okay, but you know this. Brings us to like the whole reason I'm I'm doing this podcast in the first place, and that is that is because after um completing all nine volumes, um 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 Kyo Sensei went over to doing do a new series, and then he came back to doing um more Genshin, which um in Japan they just picked it up. From, it's now um like you know Genshin Volume Ten, Eleven, and so on. Here though in America, I think that I appreciate um Kodansha Comics for um releasing this as Genshin second season because that cause that way you can keep the uh, initial se- initial series as its own entity and then this one while still thoroughly tied to the original I can also be able to stand on its stand on its own and yep. and this second this this first one of this new series on one hand it's like it it a lot of it plays a lot like you know like, like um Kyo hasn't lost lost a step. At all, it's like he still he still got the character voices down. The new most of the, the new characters are are pretty. It's like it's like are are very very well well defined. It's like and a lot just like it has the same feel as the original as like the original as the original series. Like it's like you know just come back, seeing your friend, like seeing all your good friends again, and everything's great. It's like short version, it's a lot more like um like like Battle Angel Lita Last Order than it is Gunsmith Cat's Burst. <laughs> so. Though it comes with one, there is one big thing that dominates this volume, and um, and I'm not talking about the the, um, the affection that um, Kyo Sensei has has developed for um, Bakemono Katari. I'm talking about <laughs> uh, I'm talking about the it's one of its its um, most distinctive new member um, Hatokun, who is basically who is in the modern parlance a trap. Yeah, he's basically we find out that um, like. Well, Genshin gets two new girl members, um, like in its new in its recruitment drive. It also gets a third girl, who eventually is revealed by by Kuchiki to be to actually be a guy. And you know, it's like that that's cool and all, but at the same time, though, it's like it's really hard to uh, just to feel whether or not like is this it's like it, like are we actually dealing with a real character here um, versus like you know, like some kind of like then then Shimoku trying to appeal to like. Like to fandom because like you know fandom loves traps to death, and a lot of what we see in this volume does kind of feel like we are getting getting that more than any kind of like serious examination of trans transgender issues. Like we like we find out that um, Hatokun basically um, is basically like a fundashi, a guy who likes who likes yaoi, and um, we're and like he's and he's invested like a lot of effort in becoming a uh, into into his into his trapness. And um, to the point where, where one of the uh, girl members, it's like she's just kind of like, you know, I always think, like, even though she's kind of like, 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 kind of, kind of stocky, not very feminine, she always kind of figured that, you know, hey, I'd still be more feminine than a guy, and this guy's like far more girly than uh, than I'll ever be. So, <laughs> so you get, a lot of, you get a lot of some comedic mileage from his from it, from the situation, but at the same time, it's like I said, it's it's kind of frustrating to see him to see his um. His, appreci- his love of um, of um, boys' love and and straight out yaoi do- dojinshi, and then like seemed like to have them all play this up, to have him even like you know fantasize about you know like um like him being paired with um with um, with Madarame. It's like in an objective sense, um and just and because like with Madarame um being the um the doormat that he is, one's because he lives the closest. To he lives like five minutes away from everyone. Like once he um, gets his own place, like he he, he winds up being um, being um, press ganged into having his place used to, let, to getting letting Hato Hato Kun use as his use his place as his changing room for um, to, to he can change into his girl 
into his gr- into his girl girl gear for the, for the Genshin meetings. So, so, but um, then when he's um, but then when he's alone with um, with Madarame, it's like you know he's like he's still got all these like like thoughts in his head manifested by this by this girl, by this um, female apparition who represents, represents his jolly side. But you know, as he's like, you know, we've seen all this this stuff about him, like you know, um, trying to. Uh, like uh, professional love for boys, love to Jinchi. Thinking about you know the various situations that um, he encounters with, uh, that that changing in Madarame's room would lead to. He just says, "Oh, but I'm not gay." And you know, it's like it just it just seems kind of like it's it's like it's all it, that the whole thing just feels at odds with what we've been shown so far. I mean, it could I'm willing to suspend the disbelief that that um, Kyo Sensei is, is um, intended to be deliberate. That that this is. That you know that that Haruto Kun is actually going to force to be you know reconcile his, it's like you know his, like his thoughts with you know with with um with reality in general. But but as it is, it still feels kind of kind of frustrating and like he's like we're not like even though it's like he's he's certainly well developed, he's not quite at the same level of realism that the or believability that the uh, that the main cast had. Oh, the. Uh... I, I, I've read the same volume. I don't. I, I tend to. Well, my biggest. It was almost as if uh, you know um, uh, he's being apologetic for it in this volume. Like you know, it, it seems to be really heavily emphasized, even over the other new characters in that are were introduced to. We're introduced to uh, now, uh, you know, uh, from the previous roster, if you will, to this roster, we're now girl heavy and guy light. Yes, which yeah, that seems like another like, like example of the changing tides of fandom. That you know, like it's all that you know, you you've got to have like all these series to feature like girls in there. Mm-hmm. It's like you're going to be succeed. And on one hand, that actually makes um, bizarrely that actually makes Kuchiki um, more like likable in the sense that. Even though you've got all this, like you see, get the feeling that maybe this is catering to, like, to otaku taste. You see, got Kuchiki in the background, just like, "Muhaha, not my own harem now." Mm-hmm. So, so it's, it's kind of fun to observe him, it's like his his reactions to this, like, to this new all girl, uh, this, this new all, almost all girl Genshin, except almost except for him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just interesting, you know. Uh, and when I say. Uh, kind of apologetic about it. He spends a lot of time, you know, uh, especially with the one new character of the club. Uh, she compares herself to him, you know, yeah. and is, 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 and, and we're, we're led through this whole dialogue where he's, I think he passed out or is sleeping or something. He's, yeah. They, they and, and, out after, 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 after the three new members of Genshin, uh, like the stocky girl, I said, I got the book right here. It's like, there's Yajima, there's mm-hmm. Yoshitaki, yeah, the energetic one, and mm-hmm. um, and hot, they all they all get together at at Anjima's apartment in order to um like get together put together their profiles for the club. They want to get they want up drinking, passed out. Anjima wakes up and sees Hato Kun's like gloriously feminine body in front of her. Mm-hmm. And that and and uh, there's that, and then and then there's a whole another section, you know, uh, with Metarame that that uh, you know Metarame, where you know it's like this dialogue is taking place, like. People are, you know, that's what I mean by kind of like apologetic. I mean, it, it's like we've spent all this time trying to establish, like, this character in particular. And, and, and you know, and even though the other characters might be interesting, one is a rehash from the earlier series. It was, um, uh, what's her name's American uh, friend? Oh, yes, yeah, Susanna. Susanna. Sue, Sue right. It's, uh, you know, who, uh, you know... Seems to be making only a little bit more sense in these in this volume compared to the previous ones. Um, I guess that that uh, was supposedly a uh, the way that uh, they wanted to portray her. You know, we had to understand being in America that she's in Japan and that she doesn't know Japanese very well. Now yeah. that doesn't even she, she, she doesn't know she doesn't know Japanese as well as she lets on. Yes, that's uh, that's that's a better way of putting it. Um, in this uh, in this volume, uh, we don't actually even get any hint of that whatsoever, outside of the fact that hey, maybe she is just an otaku who's just you know quoting things and dressing weird, you know. Yeah, of course I she mean, always she always did have kind of a weird streak to her, but you know, but yeah, but, like, you know, I think uh, that, 
Oh, no, ahead, I, just, I just want to say the thing with her character. It just seems like, you know, it's like the one thing, I mean, yes, she is probably like, the, she's easily the least realistic character um, in the entire series. But at the same time, I can't, I just can't stop myself from thinking that, you know, maybe there are, like, you know, just some American fanboys and maybe even, maybe even a fangirl or two who probably do try to go to Japan and try to get by just by using um, I catchphrases. As she does right there. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I can't ever figure out like who uh, who she's supposed to be modeled after because I could, you know, um, in the original series, I could absolutely like imagine this character, you know, as unrealistic as she. I've never actually. I don't think I've actually met anyone like that. Although I've been to a lot of anime conventions. <laughs> you know, no. Maybe they only reveal their true selves in Japan. Strangely enough, yeah. Well, str- I, I imagine that people are people no matter where you go, even though you know one culture has its you know differences than the other. You know, what we consider weird may not be weird. You know, but mm. uh, you know, uh, in some you know, and maybe in the Japanese culture. Oh, okay, that's cool. Mm, we can eat unagi. We know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's it. Uh, I can't really speak to the other characters as they weren't addressed as much as, uh, you know, maybe I would like to have talked about, you know. Um, I mean, it, it's easy to grasp for their personalities. But even then, it's like, I mean, Hato-kun really kind of dominates this volume. Like, even, uh, even the development of the other girls is kind of, like, handled in context with him. Yeah, there is even a cameo, if you want to put it that way, of um, uh, uh, whose is it? Whose sister is it? Um, Kosa? Oh, uh, um, Sasahara's Ka- sister. Sasah- Sasahara's sister, and 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 what is the bottom line of that encounter? It's it's she's walking into the Genshiken club room, and who's sitting there? It's Metarame. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but seriously, <laughs> that to me, it's like, and then and what's the bottom line of that conversation, you know? Yeah, so you're just like, we're just relating a whole plot point from the previous series, which, you know, I will, I will admit that, that it's, that, that kind of like, that that's still fertile territory for them, for them to be mined. But, yeah, um, and, and I almost felt like maybe, hey, they could, they could kind of pull a little bit in that, of that in there. I wouldn't mind, you know, seeing that, but... Um, you know, uh, you know, now they're trying to build something else maybe out of it. I don't know. Or he yeah, I get, I get the feeling like it, that whole, like, that whole encounter with, um, Tassara's sister does kind of like set up, set up, you know, like what's going to be the thrust for, um, Madarama's character for this series that, you know, he's got to get over his, um, like his infatuation with Kasakabe. And, um, you know, that's going to be like, you know, like he's finally going to like, you know, start playing for the other team or just, you know, it's like, Realize like you know, I've got to like you know go go do something completely different. Find myself you know like a non otaku girlfriend, as um like like her. But um it's it's still it's too early it's too early to tell. But but I'd say I'm but I'm optimistic that we're going to that we'll get some decent material out of this particular thread. Yeah yeah um yeah we'll have to see how uh, how things develop you know and uh, you know. Hopefully we get uh, you know good character expositions out of other people too. <laughs> Indeed. Well, one last thing before before we wrap this up, um, mm. the uh, first the initial series of Genshin was translated by um, by David Uri, who um, his translation it, it's good enough. I mean, it's like it can best be described as workmanlike, as is the um, his translation notes back, back of each volume, which kind of trying to give you the, the, the bare minimum of it's like of what of what you need to know as far as the otaku reference. References. They get, they get a bit more detail as things go on, but mm-hmm. but it's like I me. Mean, it's like it's the first first volume, the first series is you know good, is good enough, and it gets better as it goes along. Second, this first try of the new series is translated by um, by Stephen Paul, who I've actually seen in person several times at at Comic Con at the uh, Lost in Translation panel, and okay. he's got and his and his work is a bit is a bit more is a bit more loose, reads a bit bit smoother, and his translation notes are it's like are are some more more prolific prolific as well mm. it's like it's but still it's like i can't help but in rereading this like the entire series i just can't help but feel that you know this series um more than anything else, other series i've read probably deserves a a carl horn translation because mm. as, as someone who like who is a huge fanboy himself who is like got an encyclopedic knowledge of like of otaku, otaku culture it's like, and also like, is willing to like, go the extra distance for like, you know, for making a translation read, it's like read well in colloquial English. Like, look at the 
this is look at the Kurosaki Corpse Delivery Service. I would have loved to have seen what he what he did with a series that is that is like so that is so um, fanboy or otaku oriented in, in nature. It's like we're probably never gonna get to see gonna get to see that, but still, it's like I I can dream. Uh, yeah, yeah. Always makes you wonder, right? I mean, it's too bad this isn't a Dark Horse title. <laughs> you know? uh, well, the other sad truth is uh, this was a Dark Horse that Genshin was initially published by Dark Horse. We probably wouldn't have gotten past Volume Three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 a sad, sad, ugly truth, right there. Yeah, so true, so true. But this one is Kodansha Comics. You know, um, I don't know if uh, the gentleman you mentioned is a regular part of their translating staff or whatnot. Um, uh, Stephen, you know. Stephen Paul, he does all sorts of stuff. He does. He's a guy who does Yots- Yotsubato oh, and okay. um, like plenty, of, plenty of other. St- he, he's he's pretty prol- prolific from what, from what I understand. Like he also did the um, the, Az- the um, new edition of Azumanga Daio from Yen. Oh, I you know what I have the omnibus for that. So um, and I yes. did notice a definite difference. I've had I own the um, I own the uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, the uh, the ADV mangas. So know, do I. And, I. and I did it. And I and I bought the um, I bought the uh, uh, the omnibus because I was like, oh okay, hey look, it's um, it's it's done by Young Press. And and I looked through it. I was like, hey, you know, and I did some side by sides. And you know what, things. A little bit more contextually better. Let's put it that yeah, way. It's like I mean, it's like, I like the fact that you know, like in Azumanga, that they're released, they're released learning, they're learning that in in the new new edition, they're released, they're they're assumed that they're learning English, not Spanish, in the mm. first volume. But there were also a couple of little things that I did like from the little very specific things that I remember from the heated translation that, that I liked, like um, Tomo calling um, Yukari like yo, hey Yukari baby, at one point. And I can I can understand that that seems more like. More like um like more tomo speed than saying than than literally translating as as Yukari Chan, or when um Sakaki is reaching underneath the car to get um to get the uh, to get um Kami Neko and she's like she reaches and then she says oh it's a nibbler and um as opposed to like this one I think it's like this one bites um mm-hmm. in the uh, in the new new edition but it's like it's very mm-hmm. very specific very specific and like I said I like, like I said I like like Paul's tra- translation translation work here yeah. but it's like but you know, it's like still, it's like, um, I guess I'm always going to be wondering, like, you know, it's like, you know, what, what if, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's always, it's always a, an interesting debate, you know, um, one that I've, uh, I really don't talk about too much, but it's like, you know, there are certain author or certain translators, uh, and maybe it's the publishing house that encourages them to do that, to be, you know, to to you know, smooth out the <laughs> phrases, so to speak, oh, if you know yeah, what I mean by that. Yeah, <laughs> Make I them more relevant to our culture, you know, and, and, and it, it, it's like I said, it's like, it's like slicing, uh, slicing hairs at this point, but um, sometimes yeah, but- it is. Sometimes, though, I mean, there are some valid points to be made. I'm not going to deny that, you know, um, you know, maybe we should take it literally and maybe have the translation of what that, uh, you know, colloquialism actually means. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's probably a a, a large podcast uh, for another day. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I t- my my general feeling on the whole whole thing is like, while I do prefer things to be as accurate as possible, if you're as um, funny and witty as Carl Horn, then it's not going to matter. There you go, there you go. Uh, and with that, well, that'll wrap it up for your uh, comments on Genshin's second season. Yes, yes, it will. It's like that's that's it for now. And next next time, we'll be back with uh, my thoughts on Mark Wade's um, super. Like superhero re- redemption, it's like redemption and and destruction series, um, irredeemable and um, incorruptible. All right, and we'll catch you next time. Later. Bye.